the worst ways to die. When I was about 13 years old, I used to watch a show called Horrible Histories. And if you lived in the UK and you grew up around the same time as me, you know what this was. It was a, the best way to learn history. It was great. And they had a section called Stupid Deaths. They even had like a little jingle. Stupid deaths, stupid deaths. Hope next time it's not you. <laughs> where they just like made fun of people who die in weird ways. Uh, and today we're gonna be watching Huckabee's Weird Deaths. Draco was a lawmaker back in ancient Greece around 600 BC, and he was also a giant asshole about his job. He thought punishing relatively smaller crimes like theft and forgery with the death penalty was a great idea. And wh Why, man? <laughs> theft of what, like a, a loaf of bread? Don't they chop off your hands for that in those days? Also, Hobbies has a great voice for this kind of commentary. Wanted to punish murder and kidnapping with even more severe punishments, but wasn't sure how to punish people any harder than straight up killing them. You know the term draconian to describe any overly severe punishment? That's where That's it comes where from? This comes from. He was actually okay. pretty dang popular for a bunch of historical reasons that aren't important to this video. But back in the day, it wasn't uncommon to show someone your appreciation in ancient Greece by tossing them gifts of hats, coats, cloaks, and snuggly items. One what? night, a horde of Drake- Why does no one do that to me? When I go to conventions and, and people, pe people meet me, they're like, hey, you're cool. I'm like, why don't you give me a hat, coat? <laughs> Or snuggly item. Why does that not Those happen? Supporters showed up to see him in the theater and began launching all sorts of wearable charities at him. Perhaps Draco got too enraptured by his new no one likes you. Fair enough. Textile pile because he ended up smothered under the weight of the absurd amount of gifts and suffocated to death. Perhaps what? if he had lived through the incident, Draco would have instituted a new no coat smothering. There's no way! How many coats would it take to smother someone to death? You would have to be weighed down by so much coat item that you cannot move. We're talking like, we're talking like a hundred kilograms of coats here. How many people would you need to throw coats, hats, and snuggly items at you to die? That's a funny way to die though. To be fair. Law. And a lot more people would have wound up on this list for their inevitable cuddle puddle death penalty. Speaking of old school lawmen, Karondas yeah. was another Greek law dude who lived around the same time. He was a okay. big fan of Greece's assembly, which was a town square but for the male citizens and they could propose and vote on laws while the female citizens stayed at home to watch the kids or fight off the invading Persians or whatever. Hey listen, Greece may have been the founders of democracy, but well, they were pretty progressive for the time. They, they did a good job making up democracy and all that. Not by our standards today, but it was a fair bit above the rivals at the time. One of the laws he issued was that anyone who brought weapons into the assembly was to be put to death, which is pretty fair. It's hard to cast a fair vote on whether or not the seventh female phalanx should be given additional spears to hurl at the incoming war elephants when Hippolytes is digging an emerald dagger into your kidneys because his wife is in that regiment and boy does he want to hurry up and remarry. But the cool thing about modern laws is we usually have cis- <laughs> That's so funny. Also, you could say that anything is a weapon. Technically, your fist could count as a weapon. So if I curl up my fingers, wait, wait, not a weapon, not a weapon, not a weapon, now a weapon, put him to death immediately. If I bring in a kitchen knife accidentally, is that a weapon? If I have a packed lunch, if I'm eating some grain with my little Greek fork, does that count as a weapon? Do I get put to death? Probably if I'm a political rival to that person, it's gonna be curtains for me. Stop to interpret them and follow them to some degree of common sense. We usually fuck up a lot and do a terrible job and overcomplicate things, but we try. Karondas didn't give a shit. His word was law, period. So Okay, that's not very democratic, to be fair. When he ran into the assembly seeking help in defeating some nearby barbarians, he stopped, tapped his belt, noticed he left his knife attached to it, said, "Oh fuck, put his knife in his hand, and because he didn't want to break his own law, ended his own life. Wow, that is like Japanese samurai level dedication to the bit. End in your own existence, because you're like, oopsies, I forgot about it. Sometimes, listen, we maybe shouldn't follow every letter of every law. There is still a law in the UK and England that says that every man of fighting age has to practice with their longbow every week. And I don't have a longbow. I haven't been arrested yet, but if I do stop posting, just know that that's probably the reason why. Damn, that was kind of fucking stupid, but also badass. Like me. I like his okay, dedication let's do to a it. Simpler and somehow even goofier one. A Raytheon was a famous Greek Pankratiest. Okay, so in simpler terms, Pankration 
no idea how to say this, was the ancient Greek form of mixed martial arts. It was nice. like wrestling, Big, strong. And combat, and kicks, and you know, you were naked and focused on punching another man's balls and touching nice. another man. It's very straight, very heterosexual, very manly, super duper not gay. Not basically gay. Basically MMA. Also, why the fuck do all the Greeks have the most complicated names for both them and like everything? Why can't they have a guy named Steve? Who no, listen, Heronicles is a much cooler name than Daniel. I would know. I'm Daniel. I would much rather be Heronicles. Maybe I can get my name legally changed. That would probably spark a little bit of a weird look though. Who died swimming? I know how to say the word swimming. Arakeon was mid-match with his opponent in the Pancration finals of the Olympic The very Games. straight match. And he was looking pretty fucked because his nice. opponent had him in a mighty chokehold. Trying to teach the- He was looking pr- Oh, we mean like in the- in the bad sense of the term, not in the coitus sense of the- okay. punk a lesson. Arakeon kicked his opponent in the ankle and hit his opponent so hard that he immediately gave the referee the signal that he forfeited. Counterintuitively, that spelled bad news for Arakeon because his opponent gave the pussy out sign while he had Arakeon mid chokehold. That means he broke Arakeon's neck in the process <laughs> doing, the, doing the maneuver. That's pretty wacky stuff, but our boy Arakeon was awarded the victory for the match after he died. Oh my god, wow. Well, at least he still won. Jesus, could you imagine that? Imagine going to a Pokemon finale, and when they go to give up, they put their hand up in the air, they, they put their- they, they raise their hand, but their hand, like, hits you, and it breaks your neck. At least you become world champ. That's the main thing. Meaning he went out a winner. And really, I think that's all he could have asked for. You know, that and not having his neck snapped by a greasy naked man in front of a live studio audience, but a win's a win all the same. This next one's a bit flimsy in terms of whether or not it actually happened, but it involves one of the first true badass strongmen of history, so I'm gonna tell it to you anyway. While historical records pretty much confirm that this next tough guy was a real historical person, we're not entirely sure if some of the spectacular tales about him actually happened. So yes, I am talking about Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah! What? I'm- I'm making jokes that are edgy and controversial now! Jesus Christ was a strong man? Well, I mean, I think- I think people- people get mad if you said that Jesus was- was weak. What I really like about strong men from back in the ancient times was there was no numbers, there was no kilogram weights. You couldn't just go and see like, oh, how much do you bench? It's- you just lift a really big rock. And if you can lift a really big rock and someone else can't lift a really big rock, then you're stronger than the other guy. So they just judge how strong each other are by how big of a rock that you can lift up. Now that is true return to Unga Bunga. Now, what are you gonna do about it? Give it, give it Reddit gold? Milo yeah. was an ancient Greek man who tried to become just like famous Greek hero an ox. Hercules, but in real life. This guy was like if Superman, Kenshiro, Popeye, or Arnold Schwarzenegger was a real life person who went around doing shit left and right to show off how insanely ripped he was. Think He'd Arnold stick was his fingers real. out and challenge people to bend them. He'd stand on a grease disc and challenge them to push him off it. He'd hold a pomegranate in his hands and challenge people to wrestle it away from him. And not only could no one ever do it, but the pomegranate and it would always come out unscathed, unsquished, and fucking delicious. In fact, Whoa. one of the- Okay, that's very talented. If you- Not only do you keep it away, but you keep it pure. You keep it ready for snacking. His famous and motivational based stories is how he trained to wrestle in the Olympics. Milo would raise a calf from birth and literally raise it up on his shoulders every single day as he trained. As the calf grew into a bull, Milo would also grow into a bull of a man, depending on if someone wanted their wife fucked or not. Then, when the Olympics <laughs> would roll around four years later, he would carry the full grown bull all the way to the stadium on his shoulders, slaughter it as a sacrifice to Zeus, and then eat it for efficient carbo and protein loading. But his what? No, if someone does that in the arena, they can have it. No, I'm good. I, I can train for five years. I get into the arena. I see someone that carries in a bull on his shoulders and then slaughters it and begins eating it on the spot. I'm like, no, it's okay. Like, you, you guys, you got it. I am sufficiently intimidated. I'm good. Have fun with your dub. His big cock walk was to be his undoing. One day while on a stroll, presumably while looking for some bricks to karate chop the fuck in half, Milo noticed a villager trying to split a stump with the stupid, weak, pussy way of doing it, using a hammer and some wedges. Milo told the, the man fake. to stand aside as his mighty calloused hand sausages would easily pull apart the stubborn wood. The villager promptly fucked off to get Milo some food as a thank you, but unwittingly committed murder in the process through his generosity. While Milo what? tried to crack open the 
the wood with his bare hands, his fingers became trapped in the middle as the wedges fell out of the tree in his struggling. While he waited for the villager to return to help him, a pack of wolves showed up and ate him alive. Now, what? Do you believe that? That's crazy that that could just happen. Like a pack of wolves just spawned. Like it was Skyrim and you're just in, in the mod, you're making a mod that just spawns a pack of wolves when you try and chop wood. Story? Well, you shouldn't, because Milo was way too badass to go down to a pack of wolves. Like Never mind! That. Later renditions of the story Never change mind. into a roving pack of lions who tear him to shreds instead, which is better, I suppose. They're wolves and lions? Is ancient Greece just a breeding ground for all the scariest animals that you can find? Were there crocodiles there too? Was there minotaurs? I think that minotaurs are real, guys. But knowing how shredded Milo was, I'd wager that what actually happened is he killed every single lion with his mighty kicks, shattered yeah, probably. the log with a knee strike, and then yep. went on to become America's 26th president, Theodore Roosevelt. Zeus oh, that's probably true, actually, yeah. died of laughter because of how wonky his portrait of Aphrodite turned out. The ugliest fuck woman who commissioned it insisted on modeling for it, and while none of his paintings are still around today for us to also laugh at, we can take joy in knowing that he gave the woman and the utmost ultimate roast throughout the entirety of human history. Pythagoras is the guy 99% of us know for coming up with that one thankfully easy part of 7th grade job. Oh, I made that theorem. Yeah, no, it was super easy. I, I didn't struggle on it at all. I didn't, it didn't stress me out. I thought it was like really easy and I didn't. It was like the the letters, right? You put the letters like triangle thing. I'm a tree. According easy. to a few mostly credible accounts, Pythagoras was being chased by some political enemies who intended to kill the shit out of him. He was quicker nice. than them. And he managed to get away until he ran to the edge of a bean field. Pythagoras hated beans. beans. Really hated beans. Allegical. No, seriously, this dude hated beans. Okay. He tried to get them prohibited by the government because he thought eating them was the worst fucking thing on the planet. He hated beans more than life itself. What, did he hate them so much as soon as he saw some beans, he was like, oh no, no shot, buddy. And just like ended himself immediately on the spot because he hated them that much. He's like, I can't stand next to these. Done. I'm not exaggerating. As soon as Pythagoras saw the bean field, he immediately stopped running, turned around and let his attackers kill him. Oh my God, he did. No, come on. That's not real. There's no way. On one hand, I want to firmly applaud Pythagoras for sticking to his principles, but on the other hand, they're just fucking beans, dude. What? No, Pythagoras, the triangle guy? A different legend reported by both Diogenes Laetius and Lambilichus states that Pythagoras almost managed to escape, but he came to a fava bean field and refused to run through it, since doing so would violate his teachings, so he stopped and was killed. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's so silly. I don't know if that's true, but that's really funny. Oh my god, what a fucking baby. The philosopher Heraclitus has one so good, I'm just gonna read the Wikipedia entry verbatim, because there's nothing I can add to it to make it better. Heraclitus was said to have been devoured by dogs after smearing himself with cow manure in an attempt to cure his dropsy. What? What's dropsy? Yep. As cow manure? Cow manure? Why would the dogs go after cow manure? Why, why did dogs eat their own shit? Does anyone know why that happens? Is it to mask their own sense so they don't get followed? Because they're in a house. Stupid dogs. Idiots. They're in a house. They're not going to get followed by wolves exactly, are they? They're in a fucking house. Idiots. S who is making me sick of pronouncing Greek names? Thanks a lot, other cultures that didn't write shit down. Anyway, Aeschylus was a Greek playwright who made the mistake of being bald in his old age. He was so bald that he died the same way 70% of all bald men statistically will perish. An Ow. eagle dropped a turtle on his head. The oh, yeah, true. Who true. His death wrote that the eagle most likely mistook his head for a rock and was trying to smash the turtle's shell to get a nice lunch. But I think we all know what really happened. Because the eagle didn't speak Greek, it was tired of hearing all these confounding names and decided to take matters into its own hands. That's probably true, actually. Once declared himself a divine being who was no longer mortal, and he thought he could prove this by. Yeah, that's how I felt when I beat Kaizo Aramon as well. I understand where he's coming from, it actually makes sense. Jumping into an active volcano. He mysteriously what? died somehow. Now, <laughs> finally, we get to talk- But he mysteriously died three years later, huh? So, the volcano thing was pretty sick, right? Talk about someone who isn't Greek. Thank you, Persia, for giving me the story of Mithridates. Mithridates was a Persian soldier who was sentenced to execution for embarrassing the king. That's harsh, but fair. Never look weak in front of your men. Mithridates okay. was to be executed by... 
Scafism? Is that right? The hell is scafism? Sounds fun. It's probably not that bad. Scafism. Scafism, otherwise known as the boats. <gasps> no! No! Oh my god, this is the worst. This is the worst way. This There is no worse way to die than this. This is the worst way. I remember this one. Oh no. If you don't know what it is, if you don't know what it is, you're in for a a treat is bad. Oh. Okay, yeah, I had a I had a good feeling this was coming. Uh let's talk about the ancient Persian execution slash torture method known as the boats. Oh. If you're sentenced to the boats, like Mithridates, you'll be placed between two hollowed out logs or boats that will perfectly seal around your body. Your arms and legs are gonna stick out of the sides of the boats like Penny from The Amazing World of Gumball. Except your head's gonna stick out the top too, you get it, whatever. Then you'll be force fed milk and honey, which hey, that's great. Maybe this boat thing ain't so bad is what someone not wearing two boats around their body would say. Because the point of that is to get you to shit yourself. As you shit yourself, you're also going to be doused in the same milk and honey you're being force fed, all the while being left in the sun, so all of this shit is going to get super rank and super duper sticky. Now so you might be thinking, oh man, that's disgusting, really bad situation. But, well, you're not gonna die from that, right? You're getting some calories and nutrients in the milk and honey. Uh, well, it, it gets worse. Much worse. Now, dying of exposure like that is pretty unpleasant and gross. But that's not the point. The point in the boats is to have the flies, insects, larvae, maggots, and potentially hungry old people come to look for you as a tasty snack. Old people? Sitting in a wooden diaper of your own shit and having potentially thousands of vermin digging around in your skin until you die? Woo! That is the worst way to go. I don't think another way exists. Like that, they perfected human torture in the ancient times and we fell off. Like that was the peak of human torture. Thankfully, I don't think it's a good thing that it would go any higher. I think it's a good thing that that kind of went down and maybe we're a little bit more humane now. Like the guillotine was more humane than this. I didn't think I'd be able to talk about something so arousing this video. Demetrius okay. was a philosopher who lived to be 109 years old, which is what? impressive no, no matter sure. how hard to pronounce your name is. While he was on his deathbed, his sister was super pissed. What do you do for 109 years in ancient Greece? You don't get bored? Like, you can't even scroll through TikTok? You can't even go on the internet? You can't even watch Paris videos? Like, what are you doing all day? Looking at nature? Ew. There's no For You page in ancient it's Greece. Through a big hissy fit because there was a three-day religious festival that was coming up and she had some super important religious ceremony or whatever to do. Democritus told her not to worry and to go out and flash her clerical cooter because he had a trick up his sleeve. Democritus had... bread. There's no metaphor. Nice. Here. There's no clever wordplay. He had a fresh loaf of bread and he placed it under his nose. Using just the smells of the Pillsbury Doughboy's plump ass, he was able to survive for all three days of the festival, after which he immediately died. Democritus further proves that what? in life, all that matters is getting that bread. And fucking your sister. Maybe? Well, I don't know. no, I, really wasn't paying I, attention. no I don't think was that one was that important. Who died in the exact same way that I will. He studied arguments and incorrect grammar so intensely that he eventually starved to death. Glad to know I'm not the only one preparing to launch into a six hour and. No, this can't be real, man. Were humans really that stupid? Like, there was this, these were the philosophers, the great minds of history. How do you get so. That's like ADHD on omega steroids. Where you get so hyper focused on one thing that you're like, oops, forgot to eat. Now I died. Whoopsie. 49 minute long roast on each and every person I've ever met as I'm finally succumbing to the Grim Reaper's cold, icy touch. Okay, let's get a bit more hair on our Imagine chest. Imagine being that much of a nerd. In our sack. Let's talk about another badass death. Greek philosopher Zeno of Citium was going about his merry way, probably having just finished exchanging his casual anal sex hellos with an ancient Greek friend of his, when sure. he tripped, fell, and broke his toe. He then slammed okay. his fist into the ground and screamed, I, I come, come! I come! Why, why dost thou call for me? me? Then he held his breath until he died. Now call me what you want. <laughs> Wait, I thought you couldn't hold your breath until he died because you'd pass out and then your, bo your body would automatically start breathing again. Unless he put his face in like water so that he couldn't, he couldn't start breathing again. So I'm gonna call it not going out like a punk bitch. And hey, fucking finally, it's another person not from ancient Greece, which means I'm gonna butcher this name even worse. Qin Shi Huang was the first emperor of China. Silly Westerners like you, me, and anyone watching this who somehow could sneak a VPN under Xi Jinping's nose 
might recognize him as the emperor who has the terracotta army in his tomb. Shin Shi Huang nice. thought that the secret to eternal life was the wonderful elixir known as Mercury. He even had oh, Mercury. No, not quite. I think almost you know he was it, it does something to you right placed inside pills so he could swallow handfuls of them in a bid to achieve immortality cool wow. i wonder why? how that worked out hey, what's the name of this video again Green why didn't he test this on someone else first assuming he's like the emperor right he was the leader why did he not force feed the mercury to anyone before trying it himself? Was it his hubris, potentially? Greek philosopher Crispy Lips, also known as Chrysippus, Chrysippus, died of laughter after he saw a donkey eating figs. In between hysterics, he said someone should bring the donkey wine to wash down his meal with. I Man, there is no comedy. There is no stand-up comedians, no funny back then. They were dying for a little bit of a joke. Just one as a treat, so sad. The worst part about the ancient times. No funny, no jokes. I don't get it. I don't get- I, I don't get how that's that funny. What's so funny about a donkey eating thing? <laughs> I think donkeys doing anything is kind of funny. Like a donkey, a donkey lying down is like, oh, dude, look at him. Look at him go. That's, that's awesome. Claudius Drusus was one of the sons of Roman Emperor Claudius, and he died while playing with a pear. You know, the fruit. He threw it way up in the air and said, yo guys, check this out, it's my impression of your mother. Whereupon he leaned back and tried to deep throat the pear on re-entry. Little did he know he didn't have really the throat dexterity nor rigorous sucking stamina of your mother, so he promptly choked on the pear and died. If the story were instead about suffocating between a huge pair of titties, then it would- This is like what people do with Maltesers or grapes. It's like, hold on, hold on, they, oh, eh, wait, wait. I am no, oh, I got it. Hey, not a pear. Do you know how big pears are? What are you doing with a pear? It's perfectly shaped to get lodged in your throat as well. Why would you? I'm starting to think these people aren't that smart. Would be the inverse tale of how I died choking on your mother. Tiberius was a Roman emperor for a while, and he died a poor ass bitch just like all of us will one day. The moment Let's he go. died, the next Roman emperor was being sworn in. But what's this? Tiberius wasn't fucking dead. He what? actually managed to revive back to life and everybody freaked the fuck out. There was genuine chaos as everyone flipped out that Tiberius would enact swift fucking vengeance on everyone so hasty to name the next emperor immediately after he died. Pandemonium erupted amongst everyone who was gathered around his deathbed, which is when Macro, an elite empire guard named after what true hardcore gamers used to make their WoW raids a little less tedious, took the opportunity to smother Tiberius with his pajamas. And finally, a he said, no, 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 listen, listen, we already moved on. We got another emperor. Can't deal with this. There was like seven emperors in one year in ancient Rome, right? Being an emperor, not a good job. You don't want it. After Marcus Aurelius, everything just seemed to go downhill. If you were an emperor, you were probably not going to last very long. Everyone was out to get you. Everyone was out to kill you. You don't even want to become the emperor because at that point, you're a massive target. Assuring in the reign of a much more straightforward ruler, Caligula. Uh-oh. Two apostles of Jesus died in some pretty fucked up ways just for being friends with Jesus. It's pretty standard Christian knowledge that Peter chose to be crucified upside down because he didn't believe he was worthy of being crucified the same way as his savior was. But maybe a bit more fun to talk about is Simon the Zealot. Simon the Zealot was also hung upside down. But instead of being crucified, he was viciously sawed in half, starting with his cock and testicles. Yeah, they don't, what? They don't teach you that one too often in Bible. Wait, did they- did they go up the way? Oh, man. Oh, no! Oh, camp, do they? St. Lawrence I already covered in my even more unusual Last Meals and Words video. I will link that in the description. Long story short, if you don't want to support me by watching more of my amazing content, St. Lawrence was sentenced to be killed by being roasted alive on a giant grill. After cooking for a bit, he joked with Delicious. his tormentors, Turn me over, I'm done on this side. This earned him the title of patron saint of cooks, chefs, and comedians, and my goddamn respect. Oh Marcus my god. Marcus of was a Christian bishop. I wonder if they ate him afterwards. Who wanted to go out as a martyr like all the big boys of Christianity. His choice of sacrificial death was to be suspended in a honey-smeared basket until bees and wasps stung him to death. Oh my god, they Winnie the Pooh his fucking ass. How long does it take to get stung to death if you're not allergic to stings? Like, it must take thousands of stings to die to that if you're not allergic to it, surely. 
if you're logic to it, boom, GG's. Takes like two seconds to get on. <laughs> Pooed his fucking ass. And finally, Valentinia the first was a Roman emperor and a second historical man who tried to die the same way that I will eventually. He had a stroke caused by getting too angry with foreign ambassadors. Does that make me a racist? Maybe, but I'm still alive. Take that, you stupid fucking foreign ambassadors. That was some dumb ways to die. If you want me to react to something, put it in my Discord server. Thanks.